I've only had him for three months. Really? Yes. I he. It was well, I. This is uh, the only reason I took him uh-huh. is because he gave me his work ethic and he was a referral. If he had not been referred to me, I would not have taken him. Yeah, is it kind of late in the eye? Is it just because it was really late? Kind of late. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So he told me what he'd done. Um, if he hadn't had the referral, I wouldn't have. I would, I would have strongly recommend it against it, which I still did. Right. Um, but I said, okay, if you're going to do it, I'll get you there in the best possible chance, injury-free, right. those kind of things. You know, I, I've never really had anybody that I've looked up to. It's always been me versus me. And I've always been my own worst critic and my own worst enemy. So I'm always thinking to myself, you've got to do more. You've got to be better. I'm always, I guess, proving to the world that I, my greatness or whatever you want to call it, I always feel like I'm like the underdog perpetually. And that really fuels me to be as driven, I guess you could say, as I am. So what's, what's what he's had? What he accomplished, it was amazing. But he took it to the extremes. Everybody was worried about him. How hard he went on it to be the best. It's my last night in Dallas, Texas. I leave for Waco in the morning for Iron Man Waco. I wanted to make a nice beef stew. Holly is spending some time finishing up homeschool with the kids. And I'm just trying to relax and keep my nerves calm and relax. I said relax twice. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Not really, but uh, excited to go to war. Excited. To, uh, excited to get down to Waco and do business. Today is October 21st, Thursday, two days out from Iron Man Waco. I am going to run around, do some stuff for the family before I head down there, grab some groceries and some donuts for the little girls, some dog food. Speaking of the little girls, they uh, have had the sniffles for the past like few days. And I don't know if I'm a hypochondriac or whatever, but I've been feeling a little sniffly as well. Not like okay. sick, Bye. like, but like a few little sneezes and a little bit of sniffles. I have been healthy this entire time. And then just a few days before the race, I catch this very, very, very light cold. Uh, so I'm like buying these immunity boosting things. I got like, one, I got two different varieties. Maybe I can hit it from two different angles. I still feel fantastic. It's just more of like a mind game. Dad, I wish you to stay here. I'll be back. I don't want you to do. You miss me? One of the motivations that I have to doing this Ironman, and I think it's a beautiful thing, is that once I do complete that finish line, and once I do become an Ironman, that title is with you for the rest of your life. And if I can inspire my four young daughters to look up to their dad and say, wow, my dad's an Ironman, I think that's a beautiful thing. Hi, I'm so Sonic. I, I have three sisters, and I'm going on a bike race right now. Hotter and hell hungry. This is what we're doing today. Our rest stop. And this is one of my sisters. This is my daddy. Hi guys. And we have a week, a double week. And maybe inspire them to have a life of physical fitness and to promote health and well-being. I think it starts from there, from being inspired. So they can always look back at this and say, wow, my dad, you know, achieved something great.
Iron Man. Well, you know, some people would say you hear Iron Man on the big screen and Iron Man this and oh, strong Iron Man, right? No, the Iron Man in our context is um, swimming 2.4 miles in a, a body of water, um, riding 112 miles, followed by a marathon 26.2. Uh, a little bit of history of it, it started in Hawaii, which kind of brings up the championship is in Kona, uh, the world championships. It was amongst three uh, a swimmer, a biker, and a runner um, on Honolulu, and they all claimed they were the best. Um, so they created an event. Uh, the first event, I believe, had 14 people in it, um, and I think a little over half finished. Have you done an Ironman before? Never. Oh, cool. This is your, your bag, bag with all your uh, wow. run bag, your swim bag, your bike bag, your special needs. I'm overwhelmed a little bit over here. <laughs> One of the reasons that cost us, I believe, one of the major reasons that he decided to do the Ironman and, uh, and do whatever it takes to complete it, uh, is because he, he got bored in a, in a way with his with the restaurants, uh, where he was busy with the construction, putting the thing together, the second restaurant. Of course, the other one has been running for seven, eight years. So the new one, he, the hard job was in the beginning. Once he opened it, he realized he had good people. I stepped away from the business, from the restaurants. And I had a meeting with my, my management team. And I said, guys, this is something that I want to do for myself. You're more than capable of running these businesses. And it's all yours. Here's the keys. I'll see you in three months. And I basically let them run the business. And I know this is not about Iron Man, but about life and about business and about growing is, is, is not about you, it's about the people you surround yourself with. These managers that I have that can be empowered and by empowering others, you can really unleash their capabilities. And that's what I've done. And that's what they've done. And then he got bored. So he, he was start asking himself, what's next? What's next for me? His house is right next door. He used to walk over there. So what the heck, this sub, uh, I need to find something to be busy with. I'm not, rest, I'm not ready to open a third restaurant. So he found the airman. And he, that's all it took for him. It's very easy to be motivated. He motivates himself fast. And uh, he went after it. It's not feeling it at all. 4,000 meters. Good stuff. Past the point of no return as ashes fall on torture. Don't look back, there's nowhere left to turn. Cross the line, wrote your curse. The match has struck your sentence. That was 80 miles on the bike and just three small baby miles on the run, which gets me very, very nervous because if I'm supposed to do a full marathon after 121 miles, I don't know how we're gonna make it happen, but we will, we always do. My first Ironman the spectacle that it is, is overwhelming and fantastic at the same time. We're all checked in with the Iron Man. Gonna grab some fantastic dinner here in downtown Waco. I came into this building thinking it was a restaurant. Turns out it's like a conglomerate of restaurants. So now I have to make a choice. Where do I eat at inside this building? Chinese, Italian, what's gonna get me across the finish line the fastest? I ended up not getting pizza, but I went with some Mexican food. Okay. 
I see Waco over here getting their guacamole on. I am stuffed. That's going to end our Thursday and our first night here in Waco, Texas. Tomorrow we have a very busy day getting our bike checked in and all of our transition bags set up and all of those things. So I'm going to end it here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. The day is 90% mental. So if you go into it um, not believing in yourself, um, there's always that doubt. We always have doubt. We always think, oh God, I wish I would have trained more. Um, but where we are on that day and just get them ready for tackling the day as it rolls. We have a plan and the plan is most likely not going to go as planned. So we got to be able to roll with the punches. I had a lot of anxiety last night, couldn't sleep because I think it just kind of hits you. Once you actually arrive to Waco, once you actually check in and you have everything laying out, it's like, we're actually gonna make this happen tomorrow. And that's really, really nerve wracking, but I feel better today. Woke up, beautiful sunrise, gonna have some fantastic Marriott breakfast. Actually, I thought it was just going to be like Fruit Loops, but they actually have eggs and waffles and all that good stuff. So I'm very, very excited. There's a lot that goes into an Ironman event, a lot more than what most people think. Ironman will give you five bags, five transition bags, because we are swimming, we are biking, and we are running, and we need the right gear for each of those sports. Whenever I wake up tomorrow morning, plan is to wear my sweats, and I'm gonna put all of my swimming gear, which is my wetsuit, my goggles, my swim cap, and all those things actually in this backpack, and then wear my sweats to the swim start and change when I get there. Today, we are gonna drop off our, our bike bag, our run bag, our run special needs, and our bike special needs. Let's start here with the bike bag. I'm gonna pack my, my helmet, my shoes, my nutrition for the bike, and some sunblock. For the run, I'm gonna have my running shoes here with my socks, I'll put some powder in, with my race number, bib number, sunglasses, a hat, some tiger balm for my knees, chapstick, and body glide if I need it. I can have that there. And I like to pack a little towel as well, uh, just to dry off my hands or just put my knees on if I need to get down or set my gear on so it doesn't get dirty. So that all is gonna go into the, to the run, run bag there. Uh, the final two bags I'm not really going to use, and, and I usually don't get these back, but I'm going to have them. This is a just-in-case situation. If I get a flat tire, I can always have a backup spare tube and spare CO2. And I put a little extra energy bar on there and some salt tablets. Same thing with the run special needs. This is halfway through the marathon in round mile 13. If I want to pull over, and just have some pickle juice. Uh, also have some Icy Hot here. I can't really think of anything else I would put in there. I, I have a picture of uh, my wife and my daughter I might put in that bag just for the little bit of inspirational help just those last few miles. But yeah, that is a lot, but this is all what goes in to uh, completing an Ironman. So we're gonna go to Ironman Village and get these dropped off right now. Guys, we are back here at Ironman Village where we have our athletes briefing. They're going to give us all of the secrets to success for tomorrow. So let's go see what they have to say. A lot of athletes have asked, can I, can I uh, spread things out, lay them out uh, tomorrow morning? And uh, yes, you can. You don't have to leave things in the bag. You can lay them out underneath your bike. Okay? So be courteous to your fellow athletes next to you and just take your spot. Okay? 
Transition opens at uh, five o'clock tomorrow, and there's plenty of parking around town. Just make sure you park in a legal spot. Like, do you bring, redeem them right I now, or no? When you finish? Race. Yeah, I mean, I think I crossed all my T's and dotted all my eyes, so I, I feel like I'm prepared. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw your videos. You've been putting in the hard work. The bags are dropped off, the bike is racked. Only thing left to do is to eat a little bit, sleep a little bit, and get ready for race day. It has never been more real than it is right now. It's crazy that the past three months with day in and day out training and eating and training and eating and training, it all comes to this moment right here it's just, it's a lot to wrap up into a package and put it out tomorrow for everybody to see. And that's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. It, it all came down to this one moment and uh, we're gonna see what happens. Yo, Yo up, hey man, how, how you, you doing? Good, good. It is, um, it's about game time. Yeah? Yeah. I, see, uh, you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, pretty much. I okay. think getting here on Thursday, like yeah, them forcing yeah. us to do that, is like a good thing. Okay, good. It like lets you like chill. Right, like, and that maybe was have the, your anxiety like last yeah, night. Yeah, you have any little panic attacks and whatnot. That you happened know. last night. And yeah, then tonight, okay, good. Okay, we're here. Well, you, you might have one in the morning. You think I, so? My phone will be good. Okay. You know, if you want to call me in the morning, <laughs> joke. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay, yeah. calm down. It's good. It's good. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. You might have one. I, yeah. I keep my. I don't turn. I turn off my do not disturb gotcha. on race mornings for my athletes. Okay, All so right. just know you, you get that, Gerald. Okay, okay. Sure. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Mile thirteen on the marathon. Uh huh. Um, Again, just that's the only thing that I'm worried about. I've done everything else. Yeah. Okay. I've just never done a marathon. That's okay. So we got a plan. So one minute, one minute. Yeah. yeah. No more than one minute of walking. Okay. Okay. So even if you change the the levels of how much you're running, no minute, no more than one minute of walking because when you walk longer than that, it feels too good. And you want to keep on doing it. Okay. We got to keep moving. Okay. Right. So yeah, and I'll be out there kind of nudging you along. I was telling him I brought my mountain bike. We got it. Yeah, we I'll be it. all over the course. It's very spectator yeah. friendly. Well, I'm going to crawl across that finish line. We're going to get there. And I'll be there right there yeah. crawling with you. Yeah, no. come on. No, I'll be crawling. I'll be crawling. <laughs> hobbling. I might be Hobble, crawling. Hobbling might be it, but I'll I will be, be there. I'll be all over that course. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I mean, that's it. Okay. Now it's just time to wake up and execute the plan pretty much. Hey, okay, man. Thanks for coming out. Yes. Thanks for stopping all by right. and checking on me, man. I really do appreciate okay. that. Okay. Breakfast is pretty simple. I'm gonna have some multivitamins, an apple, one third cup of oatmeal, a lemon cake from Starbucks, two boiled eggs, and a delicious cup of coffee. Hey brother, what's going on? What's up bro? You ready? Final moments, man. Dude, I'm so ready, dude. Early in the morning, nothing much more to do than just mentally prep, get ready. Yeah, dude, I, I am so ready. Got my coffee going on, got my hype music. Um, it's ready to rock and roll, man. Well, thousands of people from around the world traveled to be in Waco this weekend for the Iron Man. Fox 44's Mally Jones went to the... No nerves today. It's a beautiful thing. It's, it's all... It's all wartime now. Now it's time to cut out all the emotions and just go to war. All those emotions are cute leading up to the race day, but on race day, you just got to be a machine, like a cold, calculated, killing machine. 
and that's what that's what I am from this point forward is just basically not even human just that's the mindset I think it's the only mindset you can have to do something so grueling like an Iron Man is just cut out cut out all emotions just be a machine wolves hiding nearby whispering do or die around me not one single cry can save this soul of mine from drowning tripping from my eyes seeing red tonight as I wait to say my the rock solid confident person he is i told him you will have moments where you want to stop where you're like what was i thinking is that you bro yeah good seeing you, can't, you. you can't, yeah. i can't hide from you yeah i know right <laughs> you ready for the day bro yeah it should be good their side of that Not fence over there, there. So, That's where the swim starts at? Yeah, well, yeah, you're going to line up over there, and then you'll come down through here for the swim start. Okay. Yep. Use those nerves to keep you sharp. Okay, focused. Execute the plan. Keep your mind occupied on executing the plan. Gripping at my skin The walls of night close in around me one last sleepless night until the other side
Let's go, man. Let's go, man. You're killing it. Woo! Great, great course. Just flat enough and just silly enough. Yeah? Just shady enough. Real quick, we are nine minutes into transition two. Executed the plan flawlessly on the bike. No flat tires, no mechanical issues. Uh, nutrition was on point. Uh, hydration was on point. I'm feeling really confident going into the run. So uh, let's go run a marathon. This is it. He's headed out on the run, looking good. And uh, this is where it really begins right here. Basically, it's, it's, it's station to station. He's gonna do it, I'll be all over the course, pumping him up, keeping him going. It's gonna be good. When that mile 13 hits in the marathon, I think it's gonna get dark. And I think it's gonna be a mental game from mile 13 to mile 26 because I'll be so exhausted from the swim and the bike. And I don't know what my reaction is gonna be. There's been times in your life as a, as a young boy or even at the later years with the business, when you open the business, that you really, it was hard to see the, the end of the tunnel, that it was hard to see that it was questionable if you're gonna make it or not, very questionable. And you saw what you did and you saw what happened and you saw how you made it. That's what I would tell them, just remember. Because you've done it before. You've been through that before. Unlike some other people he has. And everyone says what they're gonna be. And you no, know, I'm gonna go into this race a machine, but it's really gonna be a testament to the human spirit to see what my reaction is gonna be at, at the darkest hour of the marathon of this Ironman. I have a mantra that I'm going to be repeating myself, you know, keep moving forward. And I think you have to tell yourself that or have something that you're prepared to tell yourself over and over and over again. And that's what it's going to be. Just keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. And that no give up attitude, do more attitude is what you have to have. Because if you can just stop. And it's so easy, so many people can just raise the, the flag, the white flag, and say, hey, pick me up, I'm done. I will crawl. I will crawl to that finish line before someone picks me up. There's no, there's no not finishing the race. It's already done. Like, I could have my medal right now. It's already done. And once it's done in your head, it's done in real life. There's nothing that's going to stop me besides some mechanical failure or some act of God. Like, I will get across that finish line. Let's go, Justin! <laughs> Good job. Great. Gerald, thank you, sir. Appreciate you. All right, guys, we just wrapped up Iron Man Waco. It was a fantastic event. The city of Waco is a beautiful city. The staff, the volunteers, all over the top. A special thanks to my wife for putting up with me for uh, three months of like, non stop training. Coach Gerald Jackson actually paced me out the last six miles of the marathon and got me to the finish line uh, before midnight, which was fantastic. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, everything I expected it to be. It was, it was uh, easy on the swim, easy on the bike, and by mile nine on the marathon, it just like very, very hard fatigue set in. And it was just a matter of like, mind over body and just as my legs got heavier and heavier and heavier it was just like where the body shuts down the mind has to persevere so but we had a game plan 
we made some adjustments, uh, executed the game plan, made some adjustments where we needed to make the adjustments at. But overall, I would say it was a success. And I uh, just want to say thank you to everybody who's watching the videos, watched the documentary, enjoyed everything we did here. And um, we'll see. We'll see what happens next. Everybody's acting like the world is ending. And I hear people saying it's madness. The bad guys keep on winning, and the good guys keep on losing. We're searching for the light in the darkness. No one seems to. Know.